In this video, we are going to look at the TCP IP networking model. And the TCP IP networking model references a large collection of what we call protocols. Think of protocols as communication rules. So the TCP IP model defines and references a large collection of protocols that allow computers to communicate. And to define a protocol, the TCP IP uses documents that are called requests for comments or RFC. The TCP IP model also avoids repeating work that has already been done by some other standards, bodies or vendors. Instead of redoing that work, the TCP IP model simply refers to standards or protocols that have been created by others to avoid repetition and confusion. A good example is the IEEE defines Ethernet. TCP IP will keep on referring to this Ethernet as opposed to coming up with its own standard. The TCP IP model creates a set of rules that allows us to take a computer or mobile out of the box and when you plug in all the right cables, turn it on and connect and use it to the network, uh, you can then use a browser and your gadget works as expected. So this means that the operating system in that gadget implements parts of the TCP IP model. And uh, if it's the case of the computer, the Ethernet card or the wireless local area network card that is built in computers also implement some local area network standard reference by the TCP IP model. So in short, what you are seeing is that the vendors that create the hardware and software refer to the TCP IP model to make sure that their devices can be used uh, in networks. So to help people understand a networking model, each model breaks the functions into a small number of categories and these categories are called layers. And each layer includes a protocol and standard that lead to that category of functions. The TCP IP model has five layers. So it has one, two, three, four, five layers. Uh, the first layer is the physical layer. I'm going to explain what these layers mean. We have the data link layer. We have the network layer we have the transport layer and we have the last one which is the application layer there used to be another longer model so this was the physical this was the data link it was the network it was the transport application session and presentation so if you look at uh, this uh, application is combined uh, into one layer in the TCP IP model because the application uh, for application to function the way it functions there is the, the application itself which is maybe like a, a browser like Firefox then we'll have the session so it creates a session so when you're accessing google.com you open a browser here is this firefox uh, then you create a session to the google servers so this session will be maintained by the session layer so you're sending a request and you get a response so when you get a response it's presented here so there is the application which is firefox there's a session between the your computer and the server and this the presentation that present the information that you are getting from the server that is a very simple demonstration of how the application layer works you need to understand some of the 
protocols and you you're going to hear this throughout the course because it's an important topic and if you want you can call them rules to understand or to get a basic uh, basis of what they mean so if you look at each of the layer and uh, some examples of protocols that you can that are implemented in that layer uh, let's go to a layer like application in the application layer we have http you remember i just showed you about that session of firefox to google servers and this that is http it's sometimes https then there's pop3 post office protocol version 3 then there's simple mail transfer protocol so http is hypertext transfer protocol this is post office protocol for receiving this receiving emails smt is for sending emails and then from there we have a transport layer transport layer has a tcp transport control protocol and user diagram protocol we have transport control protocol when you send a request to a, a remote area using the networking you must always get a, a response so you send a request using tcp you will be expecting a response but in udp when you send a request you, you don't expect a response it may come or may not come so this is not a reliable service which means uh, when you send a request you don't anticipate that you will get a response there are some services where this is uh, ideal especially where speed is needed because you don't have to use a lot of bandwidth as you expect for something to come back and also you can continue with what you are doing uh without having to worry about the feedback it's one way traffic when you throw a stone you don't expect it to come back but there's a reason why you throw a stone either to hit a bird so if you hit the bird it's okay if you don't hit you are going to throw another another stone and try to hit it again in tcpip it's like sending somebody to the post office to get a letter and you want them to come and tell you whether they got the letter they come with the letter or they don't come with the letter so you want to know whether that letter was there in the first place we're going to look at another one and that we are going to call internet layer and the internet layer is just the ip or internet protocol uh, you remember in the previous session i talked about uh, ip sorry i have to write better uh, IP address, ICMP. ICMP is a request that you you send to test whether the connections are working. So when you get an echo back, that is what ICMP is all about. Then we have the data link. Data link, which can be combined with physical. And here we are going to have something that we are calling Ethernet. We are going to, to have 802.11. You can call it Wi-Fi if you want. So the, the standard for Wi-Fi is 802.11.